Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the September bulky beanie. Now this beanie goes hand in hand with the September infinity scarf. So if you are wanting to find like a pairing, this is gonna be perfect for you. Also check out the stitches. They look complicated, but they're actually really simple and I can't wait to show you how to make this beanie. If at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, so much more. You are not going to want to miss out. Also, if you haven't yet, check me out on Instagram. You'll see all the behind the scenes, me prepping for tutorials, getting ready for future tutorials, things I'm thinking about doing. I even reach out and ask you to help me in the creation process or decide what tutorials to have come coming up next. There's a lot of fun behind the scene things that I think you would really enjoy. So pop on over there and check it out. All right, so the pattern for the September bulky beanie can be found in both the comment section and the description section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link purchase the pattern, print it off, and be ready to crochet with me. You don't have to purchase the pattern in order to accomplish this beanie. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step everything that we do to get this beanie made. It's just nice sometimes to have a piece of paper that you can follow along with, or if you want to make a, like multiple beanies, or if you wanna skip ahead faster than I do and you wanna see what's coming up next it's nice and convenient to have the pattern. This pattern is considered an easy pattern, uh, an advanced beginner. I need you to know how to do stitches. If you're coming into this project, a brand new beginner, I've never crocheted before, I'm diving into a beanie, please, please, please watch my tutorials on the basics getting started beginner. That way you can be super successful in your crochet projects and have such a better experience with crocheting please. That would be great. Uh, also, the terminology that I'm going to be using for this pattern is U.S. terminology. So just to make sure you have the terms right. Okay. All right. Once you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make the September bulky beanie. All right. So the materials that we're going to need to make the September bulky beanie will include a size five weight, bulky, chunky, 12 to 14 ply, or five to six WPI sized yarn. You can use whatever color that you want, whatever's in your stash, or whatever color you just find absolutely beautiful. Just make sure that the yarn you use to make this beanie following this pattern is that sized yarn. That way your dimensions are as close as possible to my dimensions. I used Yarn Bee Dream Spun September Sunset. I used approximately two skeins of yarn to make this sized beanie. That is approximately 152 yards of yarn, 140 meters of yarn, 200 grams of yarn, or seven ounces of yarn to make this beanie. In this tutorial, I am making an adult medium-sized beanie. So if you were to take this beanie and lay it flat, it would measure about 10 and a half inches in diameter from side to side, and it will measure approximately 12 inches from the top to the bottom. Now, if you want to make a different size beanie than what I am making, I will include the beanie sizing chart right here that you can follow, check out the dimensions, and you'll be able to make whatever size beanie that you want to make. I will cue you throughout this pattern to be like, okay, so if you wanna change the size of this beanie, this is what you're going to do. So that way you can understand how this chart works. Sound good? All right, so we are going to need a crochet hook, size 15 millimeter, a pair of scissors. We'll need a stitch marker, super important, because we are going to make continuous rounds for this beanie, and the stitch marker will help us identify when a round stops and when a round begins, all right? And we will also want a tape measure or ruler to help guide us to make sure that we have met dimensions for our beanie. All right, I'm gonna have links to everything you see here in both the comment section and description section below this video video. All you have to do is click on that link and purchase the item. That way you can have whatever I have here 
make it easy peasy for you. These are affiliated links, which just means that the company will send me a very tiny commission if you purchase anything. And that goes back to my channel and helps me to just gain more supplies and make more tutorials for you. It really helps my channel. So thank you in advance for that. All right, once you have gathered all of your materials, let's go ahead and get straight to actually making our September bulky beanie. To begin, we're gonna take our yarn that we are going to use to make the beanie and our crochet hook. You will begin with either a magic ring or the chain two method because we are working in rounds. So I'm going to be using the magic ring method for this particular tutorial. I'm gonna start with the tail of my yarn, take two fingers, wrap the yarn around my two fingers, come back up and form an X shape. This is super important for you to form a very clear X shape. You don't want this too close together because it might be a little more difficult to see what you're doing. So make a very clear X shape here. Then I'll take my thumb and I'll put it on the X to hold everything still. Take your crochet hook, insert underneath that first yarn, grab the second yarn and pull it through. Now you have a loop on your crochet hook. Right, you're gonna remove your two fingers from the loop or the circle, and now you'll see your circle, and that's the magic ring. Okay, so I'm going to take this yarn, my working yarn that's attached to my skein of yarn, and I'm going to make a slip stitch just to close that stitch around the ring, secure everything down, okay? Perfect, magic ring has been created. For round one, we will make eight single crochet stitches inside the magic ring, or if you did the chain two method, you will make eight single crochet stitches inside the first chain of the chain two. All right, so working into the ring, single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, and Eight, perfect. Once you've made all of the stitches that you need for round one, you'll take that little itty bitty tail, hold the work down and you'll pull the tail and that will close the magic ring, making a very tight circle, which makes the hole disappear. And it's a really, really cool concept. Okay, so let's take our stitch marker. We're going to take our stitch marker and place it in the eighth stitch here, the eighth single crochet stitch to identify that we have just finished round one and we're about to begin round two. For round two, we will make an increase front post single crochet stitch around each stitch we have here. So what that means is we're going to be making two front post single crochet stitches around each stitch. We will end round two with a total of 16 stitches. Now, if you are not sure what a front post single crochet stitch is, let's just find the first one. Find the V stitch on the top that will help you identify where your stitches are. So here's my first V stitch. You wanna look below the V stitch. So it, pretend it's like a tree and the V stitch is on the top. Now what's on the bottom of that V stitch, okay? So there we go. Here's my V stitch, V, and that right here, that is our post, okay? So I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I will actually sometimes keep my fingers here. So if this helps you, do it. Whatever's gonna help you out. Okay, take your crochet hook, go inside from the front to the back of the post, go behind it and then come out from the back to the front of the other side of the post. Then we're going to yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through. Perfect. Two loops on my crochet hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on my crochet hook. And that is a front post single crochet stitch. Now, because we're doing an increase front post single crochet stitch, we're gonna do that one more time. It's actually super helpful when you have the first one because you just do the exact same thing. Pull through, there we go, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops, and that is a 
a single crochet. Okay, so we did two front post single crochet stitches around the first post. Now let's find the next one. So next V stitch here, oh, there it is. Find, the, so if that's the top of the tree, what's below it? There we go, there's the post. Okay, I'm gonna go in and out behind that post, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Same space for an increase front post single crochet. Great. So now we have, if we count our stitches, we have one, two, three, four. And all I did was count the V stitches on the top, remembering that the V stitch that my stitch marker in, is in is actually the last stitch of the row before. So starting with this V stitch, one, two, three, four. Okay, finding the next V stitch. There you are. Finding the post, going in and out. There we go. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Doing that one more time. I think the part that might get you is making sure you make two stitches around each post, but counting is going to be important. It'll help you to fix that mistake if you forget to make two around each post. You should end round two with a total of 16 front post single crochet stitches. Okay, so go ahead and continue and I will meet you at the end of round two to show you how we work round three. 14. Oh, okay, so we just came upon our stitch marker. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker. That identifies that I'm about to be working the very last stitch from round one. So 15 and 16, perfect. All right, so take that stitch marker and insert it into stitch number 16 to identify we have just finished round two and we're about to dive into round three. So the instructions for round three will be to increase front post single crochet around the first stitch and then make one front post single crochet around the next stitch and then two front post single crochets, one, two front post single crochets, one. You will repeat this pattern all the way around for round three. You will end round three with a total of 24 stitches. So finding the very first V stitch. Here we go. So here is that V. There's the post underneath, underneath the V stitch. So going from the front back. So increase. So one, same stitch, there we go, two, finding the next V stitch here, finding the post under it, and just make one front post single crochet stitch. Great, okay, next V, I'm gonna make an increase front post single crochet, so one, two, Okay, find the next V stitch, post underneath it, and just one front post single crochet. Great. Next V stitch, make two. One. Two. Next V stitch, make just one. And after a while, you'll stop looking at the Vs and you'll just start looking for the posts. You'll like start separating your stitches out. Finding those posts, go into the side, one side, go behind it, pop out. One, two, and then one. All right, continue on. I'll meet you at the end of round three. 23, oh, let me move 
my stitch marker here. And last stitch, 24. Great. Okay, so place that stitch marker into the 24th stitch right there, identifying we've just ended round three and are about to begin round four. For round four, we will increase front post single crochet around the first stitch and then make one front post single crochet stitch around the next two stitches. So it'll be two front post single crochet, one, one then two front post single crochet, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round four, ending round four with a total of 32 stitches. All right, here we go. So finding the first V stitch here. So make two front posts, single crochets. Oh, I dropped it. I got this. One, two, and then one and one and then one two one and one thirty one and oh let me move my stitch marker and 32. Great. Okay, replace that stitch marker into the 32nd stitch right here, showing that we have just finished round four and we are about to enter round five. So the repeat pattern for round five will be increase front post single crochet stitch in the first stitch and then one front post single crochet stitch in the next three stitch spaces. So two front post single crochet, and then one, one, one. Then two front post single crochet, and then one, one, one. You will repeat this pattern all the way around for round five, ending with a total of 40 stitches. So here we go. First stitch, make two front post single crochets. And then one, then two, and three, okay? And then two front post single crochets, one, two, around the same stitch space, and then one front post single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. Three. All right, you got this. Keep going and I'll, I will meet you at the end of round five to show you what we do next. 39 and last stitch space that has that round or stitch marker here. Remove that. And this is 40. Great. Okay, so go ahead and place that stitch marker back into that 40th stitch. Perfect. We have just finished round five. This is what your work will look like. We have um, we have managed to establish that beautiful pattern. That way, when we dive into the pattern, into the body of the beanie, it's a smooth transition. We haven't made an abrupt change. Sound good? Okay, so for round six through the end of round 24, all you are doing is making one front post single crochet stitch around each stitch all the way around. For each round, round six through round 24, each round will have a total of 40 stitches in that round. So we're going to keep the stitch marker, that way we can keep count of our rows and know when we have managed to end a row and start another row. Also, if you pull your work outward like this, you'll be able to see all of your rounds. So here's round one, then round two, round three, round four, round five. And we're about to dive into round six. Okay, so let's go ahead and work this round six through the end of round 24. And I will meet you at the end of round 24 to show you 
what we do next. All right, really quick, I wanted to show you if in the process of making your beanie, you do run out of yarn and you need to join more yarn to complete this project. I like to just give this little tip just in case you need a little bit of help to identify how to join yarn. I like using the invisible knot. So let's pretend my yarn's about to end right there. Okay, so crocheting, crocheting, and I'm running out of yarn. How I join a new skein of yarn to my project. So I'll take the yarn strand, the tail, that's connected to my current project, and I will lay it going this direction. Okay, I will take the new skein of yarn that I wanna join, take that tail and I'll have it go the opposite direction, okay? I will join these two strands together, pick up these two, take two fingers, wrap both, both strings around my two fingers, right? Take that little tiny tail. I'm going to go over the strands between my fingers, so that way the little tail is facing towards my fingernails. I'm gonna grab that tail, remove my fingers, and pull, and it'll create a little knot on this side, okay? I'm gonna follow the two strings to the other side. Two fingers, wrap the two strings around my two fingers. Take the tiny tail, go over the two strings between my fingers, and out so the little tail is facing towards my fingernail. Grab the tail, remove my fingers, pull, and it'll make a little knot on this side. So now I have two knots. I'm gonna take this yarn right here. I'm gonna take this yarn right here. I'm going to pull and the knots will join together. Perfect, and that forms a very strong knot that does not go anywhere. Then I'll take my scissors and I will actually cut these tails really close to the knot and that knot stays secure. It's really cool. I use this invisible knot all the time and it has never failed me. So now you're left with a very strong knot. The yarn is cohesive, it's the same. So you can just continue working and you don't have to skip a beat. So let me show you, I'm gonna get through. Oh, there, there's my knot right there. And I keep going, I don't stop. And then when I go back to look at my work, it's all camouflaged in. Now we can see it because this is a bulkier yarn and you know the knot is right there. But when I go to do my next row, it completely disappears and you cannot see where that join was. And then you have nothing to come back and address. It's taken care of. And I love it. It's called the invisible knot. Use it if you would like. If you have another method that you prefer, use that. Just wanted to throw that out there in case you needed help joining more yarn to your project. All right, continue on. You're doing a fantastic job. I will see you very soon to show you how we close off this beanie. All right, coming upon the very end of round 24. There we go. And I'm running out of yarn, so it was perfect timing for me. Here we go, okay. Came upon the very last stitch of round 24, removing that stitch marker right there. Perfect. Okay, going around last stitch, boom, awesome. Okay, now we are going to finish off this work. How we finish off this work is we're going to slip stitch into the very next stitch or what would be the first stitch of round 25. So just go ahead and find your V stitch. We're gonna make a regular slip stitch. Go underneath that V, yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on your crochet hook, pull that yarn tight or all the way through the loop pull tight and you have just tied off your work. And that is how I finish off the bulky or the September bulky beanie. Perfect. All right. So if you want to make adjustments to the size, here I have from the very top of the beanie down measures approximately 12 inches 
depending on how much you stretch it out or compact it. Now, in order for me to meet dimension on the chart, it just wanted me to reach approximately eight, eight and a half inches from top to bottom. I wanted to provide myself enough room for rollover so I could roll this bottom up and have a more snug fit. And then this bulkiness will keep my ears super warm. Or if I leave it long, it creates a slouchy beanie, which is super popular right now, very in and looks really cute. So that is how I made the length of my beanie. But if you want your beanie to be shorter, you can absolutely make less rows. Or if you want it to be even longer, make more rows whatever your heart desires there. Now let's go ahead and dive into how to adjust the size of this beanie if you want to make adjustments. All right, so we're gonna back it up to back where I finished round five. Now round five was my very last increasing row where I expanded or grew my beanie. So this is the crown of my beanie, all right, the top of my head. Now, if you were to look at the chart, the chart for an adult medium beanie says for the crown of the diameter of the crown to be about seven, 7.25 inches here. So we measure this and I have approximately seven inches in diameter. So I have met dimension for the crown of my medium adult beanie, okay? Now, if you want to make the large adult beanie, you're probably going to want to do one more round of expanding or increasing, which means if you wanted to do the large adult beanie, you'd probably do round six would be increase front post single crochet, and then one single crochet or one front post single crochet stitch in the next four stitches and then repeat increase front post single crochet and then one front post single crochet in the next four stitches and that will help grow your crown of your beanie to that 7.25 slash 7.5 inch diameter that you would need Okay, if you wanna go smaller, say you're making a child size beanie, a toddler, or even smaller than that, going into the baby sizes, all you're going to need to do is take a round out. Okay, so you'll just keep taking rounds out and then measuring. So this measuring tape's gonna really come in handy, I promise you, and then just keep measuring. So I'm thinking four, four, four rows, four rounds here was to six. So that is a child size beanie. If you go to round four and come in a little bit smaller, yeah, six. Okay, so that was a child and then come in around. And that is about a toddler would be round three if you went to round three and then stopped your increasing. And then, yeah, newborn would be round two, like round two and then you would just start doing uh, your regular one front post single crochet stitch around every stitch would be just two rows, round two, okay? So hopefully that gives you an idea. I'll go ahead and create a little chart to help guide you on that, making sure you're using the same crochet hook that I'm using here and the same size yarn I am using here. That should get you the dimensions for the sizes that you are desiring, okay? And then what you will do, once you have reached the crown dimension of the size that you want, then you will start making the, the length of the beanie, which is just one front post single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You're gonna keep doing that and it'll grow the length of the beanie for you. And then what you will do is you'll take your tape measure all right, and you'll start at the top of the beanie and you'll measure until you've met the hat length dimension, okay? And then you'll stop. That's, that's pretty much it, guys. So using the chart that I am helping you out with, using your measuring tape, you should be able to make this beanie in whatever size that you want. Okay, and then go ahead and if you want to make the hat length will just get you without the rollover. So there will be no rollover if you meet hat length. Okay, so if you go to hat length and you des desire to have that little bit that you fold over, then keep going until you have your desired length to fold over on your beanie.
Okay. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask me in the comment section below or uh, contact me through my social media that those are great ways to contact me. Um, but other than that, I hope I've answered all of the questions you may have on how to make this beanie. September bulky beanie. Was it all right? How did you feel about the front post single crochet stitches? There is a trick on YouTube. Not sure if you know about this yet, but you can slow down my video. All you have to do is if you're watching from a phone or tablet, there should be three dots on the top, one of these corners. <laughs> and if you push on those three dots, push playback speed, you can slow down my video. Now, if you're watching from a computer, just go to the bottom of the screen where you'll see a little gear, push on the gear, push playback speed, and you can slow down my video. That way you can see me slowly moving through the stitch and you know exactly where you're putting your, your crochet hook and you know where you're pulling the yarn through and it'll make the whole process easier. That way, once you can really grasp the front post single crochet stitch, you're good. This pattern is going to go so fast. You could literally make this beanie, this one that I'm wearing on top of my head right now, you could make this in an hour and a half, two hours. I promise. And I mean, I'm a fast crocheter, but I think you could do that also. So mix for great gifts and it's just so cozy. It is so thick and so warm. So anyways, getting past that, if you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy these videos right here, which are just more beanie videos that I have created or check out this video right here, which is just a recommended, recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you and spending time with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.